Hello students, welcome to We Teach. In the last session, we have seen the algorithm related to decision tree induction algorithm. Already seen some examples how to construct a decision tree using a supervised learning data set. So now in today's session, we will cover how do you search a best decision tree in a given hypothesis space. So now ID3 can be characterized as a searching a space of hypothesis for one that fits the training example. So here what we do is you know, if you are given a training data set, so from that training data set, we try to construct a tree like this. So first we will start with the root and slowly we perform some heuristics like uh, calculating the information gain guinea index value. So some heuristic methods are calculated and the heuristic method which is having the highest information gain will be considered as the best attribute. Further we will split the data set based on that attribute. So that is what we do. So now what we do is suppose if you are given a hypothesis space like this. So from this hypothesis space you need to pick up some tree which will best fit your training data set. So for this we use a hill climbing approach. So what do you mean by hill climbing approach? In hill climbing approach this is a process we do. We start with the empty tree empty root from this empty root we apply some heuristics heuristics like calculating information gain and guinea index values the attribute which is having the highest information gain will be selected as the best split criteria so based on that best split criteria we will divide the entire data set into some parts depending upon the values that we have for a specific attribute. So that is what is mentioned here. So here what we need to do is the entire hypothesis space of your ID3 algorithm will consist of some set of possible decision trees. So from this set of possible decision trees what we do is we need to pick up the best training data set that correctly classifies the given training data set and this is the process that we follow during the process of uh, searching ID3 in a hypothesis space. So coming to the ID3 capabilities and limitations. So during the process of searching for the best decision tree for your training data set, here what we do is ID3 hypothesis space of all decision trees is a complete space of finite discrete valued functions. That is your hypothesis space consists of some collection of decision trees where each and every decision tree is function which represents some finite discrete value. So we already know that when do you apply decision tree algorithm? Decision tree algorithm is applied when you consider a data set and in this data set you have some class labels where all these class labels are discrete values. So in the hypothesis space of your ID3 it consists of all decision trees. Decision tree 1 which is a finite discrete valued function and decision t, decision tree 2, decision tree 3, decision tree 4, dt5, dt6 like this you will be having n number of decision trees but you have to pick up the best decision tree which will fit our training data set. So now in this point what we are about to tell is whatever be the decision tree you consider in your hypothesis space every decision tree will be a will be represented as a tree structure and it will be a tree representing the finite discrete values. So now second point is so ID3 maintains a single current hypothesis as it searches through the space of decision trees. So what it can be considered as a limitation here. We can consider it as a limitation for the decision tree process here. Here what happens is during in this particular hypothesis space we have selected suppose consider I have selected this DT2 that is decision tree 2 from your hypothesis space. So when I start from this at particular point if I start with DT2 decision tree and let the decision tree be like this. So now here when I consider some hypothesis let this be one hypothesis in your hypothesis space of your ID3. So now what we do is we consider this current hypothesis and the process will continue further for all the training examples that are present in your data set. So now once you fix to this particular hypothesis you cannot change that is one of the limitation we have with this ID3 algorithm and the third point is ID3 cannot have a backtracking here ID3 cannot perform 
backtracking suppose as i said earlier in the second point if you fix to some hypothesis let the hypothesis be 2 here dt2 be the hypothesis space hypothesis that we consider for the given training data set suppose if i start with this particular hypothesis so how will start the process will be like this we'll start with the root we apply some heuristic and slowly we will extend your decision tree during the process and this process will continue until all the instances of your training data set is completed so this is what we do so during this process if you have fixed with this hypothesis and you have started evaluating the information gain of your training data set so once you have finalized that this particular attribute is best it is giving the highest information gain so once it is done and once the splitting operation is done and after some time if i feel that this particular attribute 2 is not the best to split criteria i cannot go back and do the process again so this can also be considered as a limitation here and what is the fourth one fourth one is so id3 uses all training examples so here as we use all training examples if you remember the example of a decision tree we have solved two examples corresponding to decision tree algorithm so during the process of generating a decision tree for a given training data set here what we have done we are using all the instances of your training data set while generating a decision tree algorithm so here id3 will be using all training examples of your training data set at each and every step at during every process every step of your id3 algorithm all the training examples will be done and we will be calculating information gain statistical measure called information gain on all the attributes of your training data set in order to refine or else in order to get the final hypothesis so that is one of the important capability of your id3 algorithm so all this four can be considered as um some can be considered as capabilities point number 2 and point number 3 will be considered as limitations here what is the point here on the whole we will be having a hypothesis space which consists of a finite discrete value functions second one is we will once we start the process that is once we calculate the information gain and start process of constructing a decision tree we cannot go back and stop the process and third point is once you start with one hypothesis suppose if you fix to one single current hypothesis so that will be continuously extended till all the instances of your hypothesis space are completed that is point number 2 and next one is id3 uses all training examples in order to generate a id3 structure or else in order to generate a decision tree so all these are the different capabilities and limitations of your id3 algorithm so in the next session we will cover what is inductive bias of id3 algorithm thank you